Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 326 of the Drunk Testers Podcast. I'm your host, always, I'm Tyler, and join me with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Oh, man, I'm feeling, I'm feeling at least a bit tired because of the workplace and everything, but other than that, I am very excited that E3 is almost finished up. <laughs> yeah. Such a, well, let's just say, let's just put it bluntly right here. Other than Square Enix and Nintendo doing what they've done and stuff, it just kind of feels like that this has been sort of that transitional period to where it's the last part of the console generation. Because it was kind of like underwhelming in certain aspects. I, I agree. This was, you know, we, this like we were talking about on our last shows that we did, uh, that uh, this is our seventh time talking about E3. And I think this is safe to say that like the the... But I don't want to say the worst one because it, I mean, it wasn't all bad, but it was definitely the most um, underwhelming one. Like we've, all, there's always been. I don't think there's been E3 we can't wait for them where we just didn't straight up have, find. Like I don't want to say we didn't find anything good, but like where we just across the board, I think um, everybody was kind of underwhelmed by it, and I, you know we didn't come away from like loving anything about uh, about. There's some c- cool holy shit moments, but there wasn't like. You're so used to those constant, like, oh my god, holy shit, this is awesome, and then, you know, it, it didn't. Really, there wasn't really a lot of those moments in this in this E3, I, I think, for a lot of us. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't. Know, I I guess we can just jump right into it. You know, this is we, we already covered the first three um, press conferences with uh, uh, Microsoft, Bethesda, and uh, what the hell was oh Ubisoft, um, yep. and we. Uh, did not come away. Microsoft Gables gave a seven. I gave a seven, seven and a half out of ten. Uh, Bethesda Gables gave it a five. I gave it a six. Um, Ubisoft Gables gave it a six. I gave it a five. Um, so that's kind of been overall impressions of. I mean, if you do the average on those, I think we it's pretty much a failing grade or a D minus for us. Um, <clears throat> but we had two more left to do at Square Enix, which we're gonna cover right now. And then we got Nintendo. We're gonna do in the next show. Um, so I guess we can just jump right into it. I'm just gonna go over everything that they talked about. And then we'll go back and we'll talk about uh, the highs and lows of the uh, press conference. So it started off, the first like 20 minutes or 25 minutes or so was covering Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's coming out March 3rd. Uh, but everybody seems really confused by it because they said it's going to be, it's so much content, it's going to be on two discs. But they didn't, um, I guess people were asking them, hey, is this coming out all at once? Is this going to be like all at once but on two discs? Is this coming out in parts, like, you know, like episodes? And I guess Square Enix doesn't even know. What the, what the plan is. So there's some that's like Ultimate Collector Edition, uh, but the, the whole game might not be on it, which is weird to me. A $300 cl- uh, like Collector's Edition, Ultimate Edition, and the whole game might not actually be on it. Um, but yeah, so they uh, so that was kind of talked about. Everybody's still confused about that, but they showed a bunch of gameplay for that. Um, then they showed a trailer for Life is Strange 2, which is uh, just kind of a reminder that the game's out. The first three episodes are out now. Episodes 4 and 5 come out later this year. Uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is coming this winter. I believe this is coming to Switch, though, isn't it? Wait, yes, it's coming to Switch, and it's also coming to uh, mobile devices as well. Mm. That's right. Thank you for covering that. I couldn't remember if it's coming to the PS4 and Xbox, but I don't think it is. Um, Octopath Path Traveler is on Steam now, which was, uh, was already a thing that happened a couple weeks ago. Um, the Last Remnant uh, Remastered is on Switch today. That was a big shadow drop for them. Yeah, um, former Xbox 360 exclusive back in the day. Oh wow, that's right. I remember, I forgot when that was like early 360 days when they. Yeah, were that was back when they had an exclusive couple of games that only came to 360 and not the PS3, which included Tales of Vesperia, I think Magna Carta 2. Like, yep. let's see, I want to say. What Lost was the game Odyssey. with the girl? There was Last Odyssey, which was fantastic. Remember, I had four disc. Yeah. Um, what was the one? There's a girl with the umbrella. I remember that game. It was Eternal Sonata. Eternal Sonata. Yeah, it was the Tales of People, but they made that. But then again, um, Eternal Sonata wasn't really an exclusive back then. It was on PS3 as well. Hmm. Well, I guess like Tales of Vesperia eventually did come to PS3 at the end of the cycle, didn't it? Yeah, but only like inside of uh, that generation only came out for the PS3 in Japan. And so we couldn't hmm. really get it on the PS4 or any other games up until this year. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're right. Yep. That's a good point. Forgot about that. So that's that why was... I bought it this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a great game. Uh, but so that was, I think that was the first real shadow drop of, uh, E3. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, they usually get one per press conference, um, or almost one per press conference. We didn't get that this year. Um, <clears throat> Dragon Quest Builders 2, which has already been, uh, uh, announced beforehand, but that's coming. A little bit of gameplay on that. Dragon Quest 11 is coming to Switch this fall. Um, 
Circuit Superstars is coming 2020. I already, is that the top-down racing game? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, it was a top-down racing game that almost looks like a pro RCAM sort of yeah, game. Yeah, I, you know, I thought of the I thought of like the Micro Machines racing game from on Game Boy back when I was a kid. I don't know if anybody else played that, but that's I remember I had that game. That's all I thought about when I watched that. I got a little bit of like a mm. vibes of say like a MotorStorm RC as well because of the whole top down perspective and you know those little racers and stuff. I really enjoyed those kind of racers. So hopefully yeah. this is something that's going to be very fun to play. Yep. Uh, then we got Battalion 1994 or 1944 uh, mm-hmm. is on Steam. Um, Square Enix music is now on all streaming services. So if you have like awesome. Spotify or whatever, so all the Final Fantasy music or anything you want to listen to from them is on there. Um, I liked that a lot, but I mean, Life is Strange music I love, but it's, it's been on. But they, they, that means they actually have like official soundtracks on there now, I think, I assume. Uh, but there are people who already put together like, you know, soundtrack, like uh, uh, playlists for them already. But that's cool that they have some official ones now. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind uh, DLC is coming this winter. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV expansion is coming July 2nd. Uh, we got some Dying Light 2 gameplay. Uh, we, I think at the Microsoft, we had they, it was, they had a trailer for it, and this one actually had gameplay. Uh, Romancing Saga 3 is coming soon. Um, People Can Fly's new game, Outriders, is uh, coming summer 2020. Um, when, when they showed that, I thought that was Bulletstorm 2. I was, I was getting really excited. Um, then uh, we got Final Fantasy 8 is uh, being... Upres, it's not going to be like a full remake or remaster or anything like that, but it's being upres. It's coming in twenty. It's coming this year, later this year, to Switch, uh, which I think was a big shock for everybody because that game is kind of like the, the, the kind of like the what what they call like the stepchild, redhead stepchild of the Final Fantasy games, uh, where they just kind of they just kind of ignored the existence of it forever. Well, there is um, definitely like a reason behind that too. Is it like to do with the music and stuff too? And it's way different than seven. Well, not just that, but like the whole Gambit system in general in Final Fantasy VIII is uh, much for debate. Plus, that's just speaking lightly and stuff and having played a little bit of it. But in terms of gameplay, and it's kind of inconsistent in some bits here and there. There are okay. some, there are readily a lot of glitches, but uh, there actually is one of the main reasons why this didn't come out sooner. Like, remade or even like a remaster and stuff and that's because of the the game's like a code actually it's pretty much custom and so pretty much oh, okay. in order to go through and have certain aspects of it improved or changed or something like that they had to try to rebuild some bits of the code from the ground up because of how custom the thing was back on the ps1 oh. and that's why subsequent ports of this game that came out on steam and stuff is like the original ps1 sort of port from that so they pretty much like no type of other like improvements and stuff other than maybe like a little up here or there and whatsoever but it's that's why it's taken a long while and why we didn't get the announcement for that on the switch sooner even though we got legitimately like seven nine and like 10 and 12 confirmed almost in the same direct yeah <laughs> a while ago yeah <clears throat> and those things have been ported over to everything since yep. like it came out it's been on ps2 ps3 and everything so um and then it ended off, they talked a lot about the Aven- Marvel's Avengers. Uh, we got a, a good story trailer for it. Then they had uh, they announced that there's going to be a beta with an exclusive benefits for PS4 owners. Um, and then it's coming out May 15th of next year. Uh, but no gameplay. Um, and that was the end of the, the, the whole press conference. I, it was a little, it was about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so I think Microsoft ended up having the longest one still. But um I don't know, Gables, what did you think of the whole press conference? Well, let's see. I thought the press conference definitely was a breath of fresh air in more ways than one. After going through the slog, that was EA's pretty much forgettable press conference, and then having Bethesda going through that whole micromanage shit, and the only thing being good there was like Doom Eternal and some bits of the Youngblood. It definitely felt more entertaining than, say, Ubisoft's, only because there were a lot of, a lot of other games inside with Square Enix did go through and unveil and stuff that I was personally interested in. So that does play a role. I felt the presentation was good. I actually did enjoy quite a bit of what they showed gameplay wise of Final Fantasy VII Remake. They kind of put a little bit to rest of some of my fears that I've had on the combat where I thought it was just going to be a straight up action game with no real thought put into some bits of like the materia and like the aspect of, you know, the RPG aspects of it. There actually is a active like ATB gauge right there acting time battle type of thing going inside there plus you have sources where you can actually equip materia do this and do that 
And just watching that full initial first boss fight for Final Fantasy VII play out with Cloud and Barrett and stuff, and going through the little side things that they're talking, the little side conversations they're talking about, just having all sorts of like random conversations. You hear swearing, you hear all these other types of like jazz, and I thought that was utterly fantastic in the way it was presented. I thought also that a lot of the character animations that they've done, especially for the for like the models and stuff, for like say. Aerith and stuff and Tifa, they look fantastic, almost like kind of spot on like I would actually would imagine in terms of them being remade inside of an HD sort of resolution. And man, just seeing the crowd, just listen to the crowd absolutely just losing their shit and stuff when like Tifa like actually came out on the screen and like when they saw bits of like Sephiroth and Cloud and stuff, having a quick exchange and stuff, you know, just it just felt like sort of like a monumental moment in gaming, in my personal opinion, to where here is what gaming was back in 1997, and now here is what gaming is right now in 2019, and just a whole bunch of things flushed out and added into this remake has me personally excited to go forth and potentially buy it when it comes out March 4th of next year. But in terms of other stuff inside the conference, which I was excited about, I definitely was glad that they did confirm that uh, Final Fantasy VIII was going to be coming out remastered and stuff. I was, like, uh, kind of surprised about Romancing Saga 3, because that's an extremely niche type of game, but yet I believe this is the first time it's... I think it's coming in by, like, stateside for one of the first time. I'm, I'm not too sure. I may need to be corrected on that, but... Uh, basically, what I got out of this whole entire press conference was there was... A lot of fan service in terms of the games that certain gamers will go forth and appreciate. It was well-rounded in sort of the aspects. There was literally game announcements for almost everybody in terms of what people initially have wanted. I'm still looking forward to like some sort of Final Fantasy VI or Final Fantasy IV remake in terms of something coming for the Switch. I mean, I would love to play Final Fantasy VI like, uh, remastered. And not like a cheap-ass like mobile port or some more something that's ripped off the Apple Store and put on the Steam, because that's fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But, uh... <clears throat> let's see, what else was I thinking here? But the Dying Light 2 stuff was pretty alright. You know, the bad thing about it, I felt... I was kind of tuning out a little bit once the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC announcement was, and all of a sudden, initially, to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I'm just not really interested inside of 14, and that's pretty much what kind of just let my mind kind of wander a bit and stuff. But uh, I will say, though, in its entirety, I did like like how Square Enix kind of presented itself, and it definitely was some great feel-good moments. If I had to give a personal grade to, say, Square Enix's whole press conference, I would have gave it like about a 7.5. Oh, wow, okay. It definitely felt it definitely wait wait wait. Yeah, it definitely felt better than like some bits of what I felt with Microsoft because there were actually some games inside that kind of like uh, I was surprised by that I felt were very akin and nothing like really too repetitive. But uh it definitely felt better than say Ubisoft's, which yeah, they pandered also to a specific crowd and stuff like that, but there wasn't as many surprises inside of that conference I felt in compared to what Square Enix was going with. So that's why I go with seven point five. Okay, fair enough. Um, so I, I can't wait from this. I none of this spoke to me. None of these games did. Um, okay. The, the only game I like. I was people, wondering how you would react to this one, though. Yeah, like I, I'm trying. It's a weird thing. It's definitely one of those things we're trying to figure out. Okay, like how was this to me compared to how is it to everybody else? You know, I, I felt going looking at it online, like everybody was in like you and a lot of people are like way more positive on this because especially the Final Fantasy VII stuff. Um, than you know that i am like i looked at this the only thing i was really looking forward to out of this that i knew of was avengers um and yeah avengers is pretty good they I spent thought. 15 minutes or so on it they showed zero gameplay that was a huge bummer there's some yeah. gameplay has leaked and stuff and i guess it's some it's playable behind doors oh. um which is insane to me like this game is you know like there's not another e3 before this game comes out like this yeah is, you got a good point Huh. This this game transcends, you know, video games. This is Avengers, the most popular IP out there probably right now in all of entertainment. Um, outside of maybe Fortnite. But even Fortnite's dropping a little bit um, these days. And it was just, it was, I don't know. It, I, I kind of came up from it. I was probably the most, I don't want to say bored, 
the Ubisoft one was by far the most boring one to me, Agreed. but the most unentertained by this one, which I don't know if that makes uh, sense, but I was at least well, like... Yeah, yeah, I kind of understand where you're coming from. I mean, for one, I know you're not too much of a fan anymore of, like, say, a lot of JRPGs and mm -hmm. stuff, and so a lot of the things that were announced, I know you probably didn't really care too much for because of, like, some bits of the aspects and stuff, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of these games I looked at, I'm like... 15 year old high school middle school age tyler would fucking would be geeking out over like square enix would be a 10 out of 10 or 15 out of 10 for tyler um just looking at dragon quest final Fantasy, all the final fantasy games last remnant uh you know octopath traveler kingdom hearts 3 um romancing saga 3 uh all those final fantasy 8 i probably would have freaked out about even though i would never played it before um like i would have loved that 10 10 15 years ago or 9 10, 15 20 years ago um but I, I just can't can't wait from this. Like, Final Fantasy VII looks great. It's a game that I know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat that game. That's not my game. I, I appreciate the game. That's you know, but it's just it's not my my thing anymore. Um, you know, Final Fantasy Chris Chronicles. That game I hated. That game on GameCube back in the day, especially with this <laughs> with this bullshit where you had a, like the, for multiplayer you have Game Boy Advances with the link cables. Um, oh yeah, the, the whole thing about the yeah I remember that back in the day where basically and this is for everybody listening in home and stuff back around 2003 2004 when square enix released final fantasy crystal chronicles the way you did multiplayer in this game was like almost bad shit awful in my personal opinion yeah it was like 700 dollars. well not just like 700 <laughs> that's just like 700 dollars. basically what you had was you had one player that had like a controller and then you had the three other players that could connect with this special type of link cable that would connect onto your game boy advance right and uh, basically, you needed three of those and three other Game Boys in order to get like competitive, like actually like decent multiplayer. It was yeah. not the ideal solution for that yeah, had, the time. It was, it was insane. You had to have three Game Boy Advances and three cables. It was the dumbest thing ever. And those cables uh, are kind of hard to come by now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, was, it was so stupid to have that as a thing. Um, but I guess it's cool now. People can finally play it multiplayer uh, and actually play it right. Um, I don't know. I just I look at everything that was talked about in here, like, and nothing spoke to me. Like the people could fly. Like I got really excited. You know, there was no gameplay, but I was like, oh man, maybe we're finally get Bullstorm two. Uh, maybe Outriders might be Bullstorm two. I don't know. Like I, I like about people can fly his games, like Bullstorm and uh, Gears Wars. Gears Judgment gets a bad rap, but it's still a, it's a fucking Gears game. Like I, I still don't get the hate for Gears Judgment. I'm gonna, like, I'm going to go a little bit of rant about that, but I still don't get the hate about it. People always bitch about, oh, you don't put the play as all, Marcus and all the, and Cold Train's out there, blah, blah, blah. But it's the fucking, who cares about the story in goddamn Gears of War? Um, anyways, <laughs> you got a Gears point. of War is a great game. <laughs> like, they're, they're fun games to play. It's just Gears of War 3, but it's just more Gears of War 3 is all it was. But anyway. All, all I cared about back in the day when I was playing Gears of War was just, like, freaking, like, chainsaw lancing through freaking, like, a grubs and stuff, dude. Below. Exactly. With and like a, a witty line every now and again, and that and yeah. Anyways, dude, I got uh, amazing nostalgia for that. Anyway, yes. go ahead. oh yeah, I'm, I'm I'm ready for Gears Five. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I'm I'm hopeful. I, there was no gameplay for that game either. Um, but I'm hopeful for that game. Like really, the only two things that stuck out to me was was uh, people could fly his new game, Outriders and Avengers, and we got no gameplay for those. Um, so I, I don't. It's hard for me to judge because I feel like a lot of people like this. Um. Like the Life is Strange two trailer, that was awesome. Like that, I'm glad they're showing that off. But the game is infuriating me so much. Where the first episode came out in uh, like October, November, and then the second episode came out in like February, and episode three just dropped in May, and now episode four doesn't come out until September, and it doesn't the episode five, the last episode doesn't come out until December. It's an episodic game, and it's gonna take over a year for this whole thing to happen. So it's like I really want to play this game, but I'm like I'm I, I played episode one, but I'm like what's the point of me playing this game? When it's going to take, I have to still have to wait six more months for this game to be over. Like, I'll just wait till November and play him or something. Um, Good idea. Yeah, but th that was cool to see. Like, I love Life is Strange. Obviously, everybody knows about it if you listen, knows that. But it's like the one thing that hyped up the most for people uh, was Avengers. And you showed nothing for this. Like, there's no gameplay. There's like no major details on how the game works. We don't really know much about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I've been still I'm still trying to think of a grade because like was I did I, I enjoy Bethesda more because of Doom Eternal but I really thought I was more you had they had my attention more than Bethesda did 
outside of Doom and Wolfenstein. Um, Ubisoft, I, I, it's better than Ubisoft because Ubisoft just bored the fuck out of me. I had nothing to come away from that that one. Um, can can I do? Do I have to do half points? Can I do? Can I do non half points as well? <laughs> non half points. What does that yeah. mean? <laughs> like, all right. So it's it's. Can I give it a five point nine? <laughs> I want to get the. Is that allowed? <laughs> oh come on, we're not in the territory of seven point nine too much water territory. Come on. Oh, okay, fuck. All right, I'll do. So half points it is. I have to give it a five point five, and okay. I hate like it's it's better than that, but I can't give it more than Bethesda. And I gave it a six, and Bethesda had Wolfenstein and Doom. So okay. Maybe I should maybe I should go if I can retroactively go back and give Bethesda six point five and give this a six. I would, but it's 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 in it's in the it's in the show notes now. It is in stone. Uh, I can <laughs> I know I can hit backspace and change all that, but it's it's too late. We've gone too far. Um, I don't know, but yeah, it, it wasn't a terrible press conference for. It's for all intents purposes, it was a great press conference for people. It just wasn't a press conference for me. Um, but anything you want to mention or talk about before we head out of here? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, well, that's going to wrap up this one then. So we will be back here uh, for, I don't know, a couple hours for you guys, but a couple minutes for us. And we'll be talking about the Nintendo's uh, E3. So uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I was your host, I was Tyler. And I have been Colonel Gable. So until next time, everyone, have yourself a good day. And thank you for listening to another fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds podcast. Bye, guys. See ya.